Hey guys, today I want to go over site topography and view range, and how exactly your view range affects your views and what you're seeing. So right now I just have a basic floor plan, I uh, just laid down some walls. Uh, so if I go over to the properties window and click on view range, now remember to do this you have to be clicked off of everything to see the properties of your view. So we'll do that, we'll scroll down, and you'll see a category called View Range. Now when you click Edit, you'll see a dialog box appear. Uh, there's a top level, a cut plane, and a bottom level. And there's also View Depth. Now what top will do is hide anything above the 7 foot 6 plane. With the cut plane, uh, think of it like you're chopping halfway through your room. So if we have a window here at 5 feet, because our cut plane is at 4 feet, we're not going to be able to see it. Um, and I'll show that here in a sec. So the bottom is set to 0, 0, which is associated with the bottom of level 1. And the view depth says how far past you extend it. Now all of these are extremely important values to understand, uh, especially when you're dealing with topography and components. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and put in two windows. Um, I'm just going to use one of the preset windows that we already have. So I'll choose 36 by 48, and I'll just put them here in the wall. Now I'm going to choose the left-hand window, and you'll see that it starts at 3 feet. Well, I'm going to change that to 5 feet for a minute. And as you can see, the window has disappeared. Well, I didn't delete it, so I'm still able to select it, uh, but I just don't see the opening. I don't see where it is. But I can still see the other one. Well, that's because we changed the sill height to 5 feet on the left one, while the right one is still at 3 feet. But if we go back to view range, remember our cut plane was set at 4 feet. That means that whatever the cut plane runs through, we see that opening. Because our one cut plane is above that mark, we can't see it. Uh, if we change the cut plane to 6 feet, then the second window will reappear, because we raised the cut plane so that it now cuts through that level. We've raised it up to 6 feet above the associated level 1. Now if we change the cut plane to 2 feet, then both windows will disappear, because they are both now at 3 feet and 5 feet above the cut plane. So if we change the cut plane to 5 feet, then we can see both of the windows, because that cut plane runs through both. Your bottom and your view depth also play into this, but they do more with site topography. When you're going through your topography, a lot of times I'll tell people to click on your site. That is, click on the site view. Uh, the reason for that is because your view range is different. It'll extend down to the level below. Uh, your top plane will be set way up at 200 feet. Your cut plane will also be set at 200 feet, and then your bottom and your view depth will be set at level below. Now for those last two, you can set them to unlimited, and what that means is you'll basically just be looking down to effectively infinity. So we'll hit apply, and now we're going to go to the massing and site tab. Uh, you'll see that under that tab you have a bunch of different components you can choose. Topo surface, which is basically topography, works off of a point system. So if you click on topography, uh, you can place points, you can create from import. That is, if you have a DWG 3D topography file, you can import it in, and it'll create a more usable topography using Revit parameters. Or you can click simplify surface to reduce those points. So if I place a point, understand that you have an elevation. Right now we're at zero feet. So once you click three points down, Revit will automatically triangulate a plane. And if you keep on clicking and adding points, uh, those points will begin to then further define the size of your plane. Now if you place a point within the plane that you've created, you'll see that nothing changes, and that's because our elevation is still set at zero feet. So only points outside the plane will begin to redefine the size and shape, uh, and notice that it will also detach existing points if the plane moves beyond them. 
Now, if you want to change your elevation, note that it's going to be based on absolute elevation, or relative to whatever surface you choose. I usually use absolute, but it's up to you. So if you set the elevation three feet up and place a point, you'll see three lines appear for your zero, one, two, and then finally at the top, your three foot elevation. And it continues automatically grading as you add points. Uh, the same is true with negative elevations. If you put in negative 10 feet, now when we start adding points, you can see that the topography is going down. And you can see the topography as is. Uh, now the simplify surface option. This allows you to remove points or just adjust your values. So if I want to simplify things to three inches, I can go ahead and do that. If you want to remove a point, just hit escape, highlight a point that you don't want, and hit escape again. And then it'll just jump to the next available point. Uh, likewise, you can drag and move these points around. Also note that under the properties window, you can adjust the elevation of individual points manually. Now I'm going to hit the check mark, and you'll see that you can see the topography perfectly in your site view. Because remember, under our view range, the bottom level is unlimited, so we can see all the way down, and our top range is 200 feet. So under Sight, you can see the thing in its entirety. If you go to level 1, though, you might not see any of your topography. Now this could be for several reasons. It may be out of your view range, uh, meaning that you can't see far down enough. Or if you go to the View tab and Visibility Graphic Settings, uh, remember the keyboard shortcut is VG, so if you go into that menu and scroll all the way down to Sight, there's a chance that it might be unchecked. Uh, that's not the case here, so more than likely this is because of view range. So let's test that out. Uh, we're going to go into view range, and we're going to change the bottom and the view depth to unlimited. And we'll hit apply, but nothing happened. So it wasn't view range. Uh, sometimes you're going to have to play around and do some exploring to see why your topography might not be appearing uh, among your elements. So let's go back into visibility graphic settings, and if you scroll to topography, you can see that it wasn't checked. Now if we go ahead and check that and hit apply, then our topography will appear. So there are a huge number of factors that can play into whether or not you'll be able to see your topography. Uh, whether it's visibility graphic settings or view range. So if we were to go back into view range and change our bottom and our view depth to zero feet, uh, it still doesn't get rid of the topography. Now sometimes you're going to want to add on to your topography, and that's completely fine. But a lot of times people's first instinct is to go to the Massing and Sight tab and click on Topo Surface. Now there's a number of reasons why you wouldn't want to do this. One of them is that if you choose topo surface, you're going to have hundreds of different topos for each contour that you want. And this can be a problem, because under options like building pad, Revit will only recognize one topos at a time. So having multiple topography surfaces will conflict with those building pads. So what you should do to change your topography is click on the actual topography surface and then go up and click Edit Surface, and that will open back up your topography for editing just like before. So now you can go in and add points just like before, or you can hit Escape, select a point or multiple points, and delete them. And then when you're done, you can just hit the check mark to save your changes. Alright, I will see you guys in the next lesson.